Hey, what's going on guys? Bodie here. Welcome to episode 35. We're finally about to go at PKing. First of all, I'm just going to cook myself 5,000 sharks. And there we go. Don't even need to say much. Uh, 4,615 sharks ready to go. It's time to go kill people in the wilderness. First of all, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Just don't ask me why I clicked them. I don't know why. I actually clicked with both fingers and... Ignore me. Ignore me. <laughs> we have only got 36 prayer potions to roll with, apart from obviously the ones that I can actually decant in the background, but it's going to be a bit difficult, so hopefully I can kill people nice and quick to start the series off, and every single person I kill, I'm going to be looting the prayer potions. If you don't already know the rules to my PKing, please look in the description of the video for the video that will explain the rules. It's kind of a bit long-winded, but please don't, unless, just ask the question in the background if you want, everything should be self-explanatory. You know, I can just answer the main one straight up. Uh, yes, I can loot items off of the players. Another one is, I can't loot an item that I haven't obtained. However, I've obtained everything I can use, so it's all good. Uh, an example actually could be if I PK an obsidian necklace and an obsidian mole. I can't use those unless I go and make myself an obsidian necklace and get myself an obsidian mole somehow. Well, damn. While I was buying Kawamas before this guy could even do it. Oh, he beat me to it. Uh, I have no teleport. Great. And I'm 22 minutes to a house tally, which means we're going on a trek. All right, and here we go. We have our first fight of the day. Mate, look at these hits. This is already starting off quite well. Um, it's actually my first fight, so hopefully this goes well. If I die against this guy, I'll be a bit upset. I'll tell you now, I'm getting wrecked already, so calm down here, mate. I'm doing a bit of damage myself, but obviously, oh god. Uh, obviously, when I'm on a low kill streak, I'm sort of handicapped in a, I'm getting double spec in a little serpent. I'm sort of handicapped a bit to actually kill people because I'm stuck with only a dragon dagger, which obviously is a great spec weapon, but you know, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> see ya, bro. Yeah, I'm actually uh, live commentating this, so I apologize. Um, I actually came down with an illness. As soon as I was ready to go peeking, I came down with a really bad cold and there was no way I could live commentate my fights. It was really, it was really bad. And okay, I should have waited until I felt better before I commented, before I recorded this because I would, I would have liked to have all my PK clips as live commentary and they will be live commentary when I'm better, which I am now. Um, but unfortunately, I was just, so, I was, I haven't PK'd in about eight months or something. And obviously, at heart, I'm like... I PK'd on this game a lot back in the day. I've got a lot of people here that have been deprived of PK content for almost six months now, and I haven't really been supplying it, and I was just absolutely dying to try this bounty. This bounty hunter came out, and everyone was loving it, except for me, because I was stuck bloody doing Carol's Crossbow, or barrows for Carol's Crossbows, really. So it was a bit tragic. Uh, but luckily, yeah, I was absolutely dying to go to Bounty Hunter and eventually, obviously, when I got the stats, I was like, right, you know what, I'm going. Boom! Illness. So, unfortunately, I couldn't commentate my clips. My apologies for this one, but this will probably be, um, I will, I will live commentate all the clips I can, but obviously, I wanted to get some content done in advance. But, yeah, this should be the basics, really, to the live, uh, the, uh, non-live commentary. But, anyways, uh, I guess, I guess this I get this opportunity to give you all some background, I guess, on the actual PK that's going to happen and how the PKing series is going to work. So as you can see on screen now, uh, you can see the little things in the bottom right corner of the screen, as in the actual window, uh, of the killstreak uh, items that I've got there. Pretty much, uh, obviously at the start of the video, I've got the eight killstreaks there. I can choose any combination of those that I want, but I can only choose four of them. However, at a 15 kill streak, I'm, I'm allowed to use absolutely everything. So, pretty much just getting to the 15 kill streak with the tough part, but I believe if I got to the 15 kill streak, I would probably not change my gear around that much. It'd be more of a um, on the spot decision, really, to change my gear, but I don't think I would. So, that part's sort of irrelevant, but apart from that, I'm stuck with, well, I'm not stuck with, but I used the four items for the entire series. And then, <coughs> sorry. And then from there, I guess I just have to get a 25 kill streak. It's actually going to be a very tough for me to do this 25 kill streak. Uh, not to make any excuses, but some reasons for that is that I'm deprived of some of the very powerful weapons that I completed the series with last time. Uh, the only spec weapons I've actually got, as of right now, of course, is the dragon longsword, the dragon dagger, the dragon mace, and the granite maul. And if I ever want to, the barrel chest anchor, the dragon halberd, the dragon two edge. I don't see myself ever using those though. But yeah, apart from that, I'm deprived of some pretty bad weapons. But did I say bad weapon, mate? Did you even see that special attack on that guy? And that 36 with the D long coming straight in. That guy just took over 60 damage on the spot. Really, I'm, I mean, I enjoy using weapons like this though, because it makes the content more fun. Like, if I was just here with Dragon Claws, well, they don't exist, but if I was here with Dragon Claws every clip, it'd be like, well, this is kind of boring. Uh, it would be pretty awesome to have some much higher kill streak weapons. But yeah, it's going to be a challenge for me. It's going to be a huge challenge for me to actually manage to get this kill streak. 
Uh, one of the big reasons for that is because, one, I haven't PK'd in eight months. And when I did my last series, all I did was PK for the past, I don't know, seven years, maybe. <laughs> I have no idea. So I was completely like, maybe not not in my prime, or, but I was very good at PK. Well, I'd like to think I was decent at PK. And I knew what I was doing at the time. At the moment, though, obviously, I've been, I've not PK'd in eight months. So I have to pick it all back up again. I need to work out everything. Well, not work out how everything works, but it's work out how to beat people, really. And how to get a 25 kill streak. It will be tough, but I reckon I will do it. One thing that I'd like to mention, oh, I guess this one I actually have to, well, I want to pull off first. Another big difficulty thing, well, a big problem that I'm probably going to have is the pit swaps update. I haven't PK to the pit swaps, and pit swaps were one of, if you don't know what those are, pretty much at times, if you watch some of the clips, it, when I'm ranging, it'll be difficult to say. I don't know if I have any melee clips in there, but if you watch the melee hits from other people, sometimes they will slash with their skin, like then, and the damage will appear on them instantly. On me, sorry, instantly. Then there's other times where the skim animation will go, but the damage won't appear until about half a second later. That is a pit swap. Like, you got an instant hit there, you got an instant hit there, and then I get an instant hit there, because that's how it works. I mean, it's an update that, unfortunately, I can't control when I know when to go for certain things. At times, I know when to risk, but because of those, it does take out a lot of the PK that I knew back when I used to so that will change a lot and eventually I think I will die to some mistakes like that we'll have to see how it goes though but yeah that'll be another problem but yeah one thing I'd like to quickly say is this 25 kill streak it is not going to be easy for me because of those main two factors there is no overpowered weapons such as D claws I think in my last one I had polypore and a claws I think at both 18 kill streaks as soon as I got those it was game over it was ridiculously easy to get the last seven kills at the moment uh, I will be stuck with my best weapons being DDS, D Mace, D Long, and Granite Mall all the way. And I can use two of those at a one kill streak. So it's going to be tough. Unless I actually go to Dark Beast to get myself a Dark Bow, I guess that's not really a spoiler. I may have already done it by now. I'm recording this clip like far before this video is going to go up, but I don't know if I'll put the time in to actually go there. Armadillo Crossbow as well. If I do decide to actually um, try, try out uh, Armadillo God, I mean, Sourdome and God, which I highly doubt. Uh, resources when PKing are very difficult to maintain. I use lots of prayer po potions, I use lots of brews, and I use lots of restores. I need to ration those because if I ever lose my Berserker Ring imbued, I have to go out to Rex to get another one or I can never really use it again. I would much like to use it more than once if I lose it once. So yeah, I need to save my brews and restores for that mainly. So I'm going to crossbow unrealistic. Dark bow, if I decide to invest the time, yes, I could potentially have a dark bow. And I think a dark bow would be pretty nice to have on the series. If I get full void and a dark bow, sort of goes back to my void range days and when I played that account, even without the pit swaps on that account, it was so overpowered. It was so easy to kill people. Not trying to sound cocky by saying that, but if you've had a Void Ranger account, you will know it. it's an extremely overpowered build. It was good fun. It was good fun. So yeah, when I get Void, maybe we'll be able to um, kick some heads in, I guess, but maybe without the dart, but I don't really need it. We'll try the Magic Short Burn Bued, and we'll see if that's any good. But yeah, uh, apart from all that, I want to talk a bit about um, some restrictions and some things that will be happening during the PKing that I have allowed myself. First of all, I have broke, so, well not, I've sort of broke one of the rules that I created at the very start of the series. Um, I realized slightly into the PKing that the odds of me spending my 20 million Nightmare Zone points was extremely low. So I'm allowing myself to buy 15 herb boxes per day now. Uh, some people may disagree with that. I have slightly changed the rules. Obviously, I wouldn't really consider my account an Iron Man anymore. I, I don't know how many of you know the term. Maybe the stream community will look at that kill me. That was beautiful. Uh, maybe the stream community will know me as an Iron Man, but I prefer to consider myself a self sufficient account. But I have removed myself the restriction of the herb box from Nightmare Zone. Only the herb box, nothing else at all. Now, you may wonder why I just teleported there without looting the items. Obviously, like I said, as I'm a self-sufficient account, I have to collect everything myself. If I bank all my items and run back before it appears to everyone else, I could pick up another f massive fresh inventory of sharks. I killed the guy in about five seconds. So therefore, he's got a full bag of sharks, probably full potions. If I bank everything that I've got and run back in and take it all, I can just stick it all back in the bank and I've got a bit of profit there. Nice, Bex, Adam, you're a good PK. Cough, cough, sorry. Um, but yeah, I did remove the rule of the uh, herb boxes. Obviously, I can get 15 herb boxes per day, which I believe is a maximum of 15 Raynars per day. And really, the main problem I'm going to have with PKing is most likely going to be the prayer potions. I don't smite fight, because if I smite fight, I would not be able to keep the prayer potions going at all. And the odds of smiting someone these days is extremely low, because everybody's got the orbs, myself included, as you can see. Uh, and everybody's, well, some people have got like Orion Client and all that stuff where... They've got things sat at the top left saying, drink your prayer potion now, you're going to be smited. You pretty much just can't even miss it. So yeah, I'll stay away from that one. God, I just, I love the D2H so much. I'm so happy this is not an item I cut from my series. It'll be my favorite item to PK with. Uh, I guess while I'm here, another thing, the part that says rogues and hunters in the corner, I do remove that at times, but every single time I log out due to having a target either with huge defense or if I'm unskull PKing, don't want to fight. Like, like I'm trying to respect the targets. 
if I have a target and I'm not skulling and they want me to skull, I will hop from them rather than get annoyed at them for not fighting me when I'm on skull because that's what they want. So I will happily do that. Therefore, every time I log, it puts it back. As for the health bar in the top left corner, I can't remove it without removing a lot of other things off the client, which is including of XP drops, I believe. Uh, so I got a misclick and still got a kill. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I will. I can't really do much about that. So hopefully that's not too annoying to look at. I don't like having my RS screen cluttered, but I think the content itself should be fine. Anyways, uh, this is the first uh, the clips, obviously, of the first XP drops. So I hope you do enjoy looking at the XP drops. I hope it does. Um make the content enjoyable for you all so i hope that if you voted yes for that one you're not disappointed with that one but yeah that will be um that'll be uh quite nice uh any other restrictions that i made uh, pretty much uh if you don't already know what the bounty hunter update is i will maybe explain it in another video but okay i'll try to explain it now because i've got time to kill i guess to cover all these clips um, as you can see in the bottom right of my inventory, if you've left this in the comments, my apologies, but at the bottom right of my inventory, I have an emblem. It just changed at that point, and I just picked up another one right there. Uh, those mysterious emblems can get traded in for what is called bounty hunter points, and then they can be traded in for items. Those items can involve alcables, which I can alk for money. Now, as a, as a rule to my series, I can only cash an emblem in if I get it to a tier 10. A tier 10 emblem is either 10 kills in a, 10 target kills in a row without dying, which hopefully should be very easy for me if I'm going for 25 without dying. Uh, alternatively, if I PK like a tier 8 emblem, if I kill someone like you just saw then, uh, I did get an emblem off him. If I PK one, I can upgrade that one to a tier 10, but I can only cash in tier 10 emblems, which means I can't just farm a load of tier 1s and throw them in. I don't know how good that actually is. Maybe this is just, maybe you're supposed to cash them in as a tier 10, but pretty much I, <coughs> I don't have to risk them. Uh, every time they upgrade, they do get a lot more valuable. That's the main reason I am risking them. So it's sort of a small rule there that benefits me, I guess. But the tier 10 aspect means that I've got to keep risking them and I can get killed on a tier 9 emblem many, many, many times. And if I do keep dying on a tier 9 emblem, I get no points. I get nothing. Overall, what will the points be spent on? I'm allowing myself to buy anything I want. I can buy myself PK supplies if I want them. Anything, obviously, that I was... Oh, mate, that's big. I remember this day. Uh, obviously, oh, my computer just shut off. Come back on, please. Uh, I remember that day. That was my first day of PKing. Uh, it was, I was PKing until about 2 in the morning. Um, and I was obviously on that kill streak then. I was like, mate, if I get this kill streak done now, it's going to be sick. But, I mean, I was actually very, very close to killing that guy. I didn't really see the clip there, but I think if the I think it was a 27, then a 37 spec. That means the vengeance goes off the 27 hit, which is a bit unfortunate because it went off the 37 hit. I probably would have killed the guy. I would have died as well, of course, but I probably would have killed the guy. But yeah. Anyways, I really love this clip. Look at this risk. I didn't eat here because I knew that he couldn't hit me. And I, oh, lovely, lovely. That's the things that I love to do back when the pit stops. And I always knew when I could take risks like that. And it's just a lovely kill there. I didn't have to eat there because he did, because he ate. Delays come into PK and like obviously if you eat a shark you can't hit them. I saw him eat a shark, so I knew that he couldn't hit me, so I just did that risk. I was just it just came out beautiful. I killed the guy. It's just a nice clip. They're the clips I like to get when PK. That's probably the reason I die so much because I always take these really low HP risks. Uh, obviously whenever I think I can do them, you know, calculate it as you do, <laughs> as you do there, but yeah. Anyways, I uh, expect a lot of those clips. It's my favorite way to PK to try and pull off impressive visual uh, clips. Like you'll, you'll see later on in the video, I pull out like four way switches in Edgeville just to try and get something to look nice. It's the way I like to do it. I'm not trying to show off or anything. I'll just throw that one out straight away. Look at that D-Long make it. I'm, oh, it's beautiful. Sorry. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, I just pull out, um, uh, clips like that. Cause I just think it's what's enjoyable to PK. You'll see it later on. You'll probably be able to understand why it looks so why it hopefully actually looks uh, a lot better than just normal kills. Uh, apart from that, though, um, the 25 kill streak. just going back to what it was, it's going to be tough. It is going to be tough for me. BH shop, though, the majority of what I'm going to spend the points on is most likely going to be Alcaballs or just PK supplies. It'll probably be primary PK supplies. When I say PK supplies, it's just like Rune, Berserker, Helms, D-Skims, normal Dragon Daggers and stuff like that. So uh, I'll just buy whatever I really feel like at times, and then I'll just go from there. Other than that, I can alk items whenever I want. If I want to get my cash stack up, I want to keep my miscellaneous going. Like I said, prayer potions are going to be the... Um, if I could one there, I would have survived, but I didn't think he was going to hit that because he was five levels higher and I didn't realize that. I think things I need to learn, but yeah. Uh, I want to keep my miscellaneous going. Miscellaneous will get me, I don't know, maybe eight Raynars per day, possibly. Maybe 10 Raynars per day, which has helped. And I've got the herb boxes and that. It's 25 three-dose prayer pots, which changed to maybe 17, 18, four-dose prayer potions. And that can turn into quite a lot of fights, which is, can turn into quite a lot of a kill streak. If I keep killing people, I can pick their prayer potions up as well. And it can add up like that. But overall, yeah, it can get pretty tough at times. Oh, mate, the Venge combos are returning. I'm just watching these clips back. Like, obviously, in the commentary is not live. I'm just watching these back, and these are some pretty nice kills right now. This is what you've got to expect. Wait till I get the live commentary going again. Uh, I will live commentary when, I, when I'm quite high. But it'll pretty much just be, you know, I use the PK commentaries I used to do, except I'm deprived of eight months of PKing. It's like depriving some 
child of, I don't know, sour skittles and you finally give him a, ba- a bag, he'd probably just savage them all in one go or something like that. So put me back in PK and like that and I'm just I'm just in the mood to absolutely savage people. So it should hopefully be awesome. I'm, I Honestly, I am really, really looking forward to the outcome of this um, uh, series. But yeah, uh, one thing I'd like to say now, I guess, just to wrap up this last part, I don't know how long I'll talk about this for, but I'd like to ask everybody to be very patient with me for this part of the series because there I could go 10 episodes straight and die at the end of the 10th episode and that puts me back where I started it will happen a lot unfortunately in Peking there's a lot of RNG I need RNG to get kills like I needed to hit let's say a 36 there that guy needed to hit a 59 there to kill me but neither of us actually hit it so neither of us died however if I did hit that he wouldn't have hit that 59 if he did hit it and I wouldn't have died in that situation now let's just say I was on a 24 kill streak at that point and he hit the 59 I'd be dead it puts me straight back to a zero kill streak. It will probably take me a long time to get this. But like I said, that could also I could have it by tomorrow for all I know. I can't tell where it's gonna be. But I have a feeling, I can already see these comments coming on my videos, but people are gonna be there like he's never gonna get this 25 kill streak or something. I will eventually get it. I really don't care how long it takes me to do this, but I will happily spend a year trying to do this. I will not end this series dead. And I will try to make the peak the uh, PK content as good as possible. Oh for that dark glory remove. Mate, how, am I, how could I be talking about the fact that I'm going to get a 25 kill streak when I'm removing glory when he's riding like that? Look at me, Pete and Tom like that. But yeah, I actually did burst out laughing when that happened. I can remember that, even though I was extremely ill. I think snot was just flying out my nose everywhere. Okay, that's probably that's pretty horrible. But yeah, I have a lot of tragic deaths here and there. Here we go, here we go. We've got the switches out. So you'll see what I mean when the switches come out. Hopefully these clips look... Uh, semi-enjoyable oh mate the magic shop okay oh though let's keep this going so yeah uh, like i said it is gonna be pretty tough for me to go oh, look at me walking pretty tough for me to get this 25 kills you but please bear with me i will get it eventually i know i will get it eventually it's just gonna take me a while oh mate the defender just sliding out the spot the spec coming in i could have died there but nice venge ko dds stack they're the kills that i want to be the most of the majority of the series uh, apart from that, I don't have any like heads up displays that I can use for when I unlock a kill streak. So pretty much, I'll just switch the kill streak to be um, what's up. Anyways, you just saw then that I right clicked those dragon bolts. So I'll quickly talk to you about some uh, rules for PKing that some people may I need uh, people to understand. You should already know these by now, but yeah, dragon bolts are a big one is a good example. Uh, I have to earn myself a dragon bolt imbued, no, a dragon bolt enchanted outside of the wilderness to be able to use them outside inside the wilderness. However, I can pick them up. Now there, I did just pick up some Dragon Balls. I don't even know if they were enchanted. I'm sat back a bit. They didn't actually look that enchanted to me. Maybe that guy was PKing without them. But pretty much, if I can make myself one Dragon Ball enchanted outside of the wilderness, then I'm all good. My plans for that is most likely... That means I have to have a Room Bolt, I have to have a Dragon Stone tip, and I have to enchant it. Now, I've had Dragon tips, uh, tra- Dragon Ball tips in the past from Dragon Implings. I think I've had unenchanted Dragon Bolts from Implings as well. However, I need to actually put the room ball on the dragon stone to do this. Uh, and in this situation, how it would work is I'm going to have to go to Mythball Dragons, get myself a 27 room uh, bolt drop, and then just quickly stick on some um, dragon tips onto it. Then enchant them, and then as soon as I do that, every single dragon uh, thing that I've got is lovely. Oh god, I'm hoping I'm not going to misclick all over the place. <laughs> all over the place here. Uh, but yeah, that's about that one. But yeah, other examples being like, I don't really have any other big examples that can come in there. I'll give an example, a prayer po- a super combat potion. There's another one. If I don't make a super combat potion outside of the, you got lucky there, outside of the, um, wilderness, I can't use them. At the moment, I'm barely even picking those up, but maybe eventually I will actually pick up 85, uh, herb law. We will see. Um, that's pretty much, I think, all I have to say. I think I've covered most of the things. If there's any questions you want to know, by the way, uh, the PK at the moment, I would. Li- if you've actually watched this far for the first time, I did say in a video, please give the PK a chance. If you have watched this far, uh, please, um, gonna kill me. Please understand that this will not be how the videos are. I will not be commentating over my clips. I was just ill for these clips. I have more clips that I've got on, uh, without commentary that I will have to commentate over, I think, in the next episode, but I'll keep it short that time. I just want to talk about some long things. Please give the live commentary clips a chance. Obviously, like I said, if it's not your thing, do not worry. That's fine. That is completely fine. Obviously, there's not much content for you there, but I have provided approximately, I think I said this in the last video, but I have provided approximately six months of content, so hopefully that's good. Mate, these clips are so bad right now. Magic short bouquet into a uh, <laughs> Team Mace bash. But yeah, uh, when the live commentary comes, I will be putting editing, I will be putting effort into them, and I will hopefully make them as entertaining as possible. Believe me, expect a lot of sad violins, so if you, uh, if you enjoy the sad violins, then yeah, you should be in luck for that. Uh, but anyways, that is about it. 
that's all I really need to cover. So I'll just play these last few clips quickly to the kill or the death. Oh, no, never mind. I know exactly what I'm going to talk about. Slight spoiler included, but as you can see, I'm actually on a rather juicy kill streak right now. Uh, unfortunately, I lose this right at the end of the video. I know it's a spoiler, but the way I lose it, I could. It's just once again, every single time I die on this game, I think to myself, slash, I just look at my clip and think. I could have survived if I did that, and I need to start doing things like that. Beautiful kid right there, even though I missed the torso. So, it's quite unfortunate, but yeah. Uh, in the clip, when it comes up, I'll explain how I could have survived quite easily, and I could have almost got the kill as well, but you'll see how it works. But anyways, I mean, I'm on a really good kill streak right now, and it's actually going uh, quite beautifully. And here, this is probably one of my uh, favorite kills that I've actually got. So, yeah, just look at that beautiful thing. Look at that, man. That's absolutely beautiful. But yeah, in this clip now, this is the guy that I unfortunately died to. You'll see how I die, but unfortunately, I popped the vengeance. And then he HS me, and if I ate the Kruwambwan, I would not have died. He could have hit higher. Vengeance could have killed him. It would have been beautiful way. The most unfortunate part about that clip is that was a tier 10, a tier 9 emblem that I had on me. My first one, and I got buzz killed on a tier 9 emblem, which turns into 5 million points. Quite unfortunate, really. Anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in. I hope you have enjoyed this video, even though it has been a uh, commentator over. But yeah, the quality of the clips you've just watched, this is pretty much what it will what, what it will be. But I'll be live commentating it. And yeah, like I said, give it a chance. But anyways, thank you for tuning in, guys. I will see you all in the next episode when that is released.